So the cloud platform environment continues to evolve. Um, so how would you describe the platform environment today and what role do containers play in that? The sort of trajectory towards lightness and agility. Uh, the ability to, to virtualize hardware was the first step. The ability to kind of provision that at scale on demand, the cloud step, made us a little lighter. Uh, and we're now entering the, the, the next two steps, I think, which are containers, which are lighter than VMs, lighter than a cloud unit effectively, all the way up to the new thing, which is functionless and or functional and serverless programming built on top of containers. Each of these is a faster, leaner, lighter way to operate, a lighter way to build code, ship code, manage code, and so on. Uh, well, the, the first kind of container that we, that we see people talking about a great deal is what we would call a process container. So Docker and its competitors are containers that essentially isolate a single process. Um, the other kind of container that's very interesting is to say, well, can we create a container that is just like a virtual machine? Uh, we call that a machine container. And so there, all of your operational primitives are exactly the same. You already know how to operate VMs. You already know how to install applications and patch manage those, those, those applications and you know, so on in the VM. So these machine containers are just like VMs, only fast and light in the same way that people love about Docker. We should like, follow one format and make it work for all use cases. Right? And that's what we are doing today. So if you go to our immutable uh, uh, concepts, we are using the same package format to put a drive onto an immutable system. Well, there I just, there I just disagree. So you say one format for all of these use cases they operate completely differently. And I'll give you a very specific example, right? So with the machine container, like LexD, you can literally tar up the file system of a 1990s Linux box, right, a physical box, untar that into a LexD container, boot it, and now you've got that entire experience and all of its complexity and traditional stuff running in a container. You can't do that with a process container. Oh, yeah. well, but you and can do it with a Docker image. With an OCI, yeah. Oh, no, you can't. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I absolutely do it. not. Because I'm doing it on my laptop, I can show the, you. Well, not so seriously. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> seriously. <laughs> you're, you're, you're mixing, like, you're getting well, caught. You're not going to get the best of both worlds if you try to make one size fit all. It, it's, but, a a, a it's, Docker it's, container, a process container, is a beautiful thing as long as you celebrate what's great about but, it. But a Docker right. container, you, you're mixing out the specific, the specific execution model of the Docker daemon, which is just one, of, one way of executing an OCI container with a package form. And that's a mistake because at the end, the, 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 both are just tar files with a layering model. And how you, how you run it depends how you mount pieces together and execute them. But it's, it's exactly it's, the it's same very, thing. One controversy is single process container is a Docker model. We don't agree with like that distinction really because Docker is just a package format from my point of view and I think that represents Red Hat view um, there. Um, it, it gives you aggregate packaging. I, I think it's more you know how you manage and run these containers. Do you have it like a UVM where you then you SSH in, you've got to patch it, which means you've then got to put it into your uh, control systems, your scanning systems, your inventory management systems, or do you try to keep the containers more immutable so that you deploy your application and it never changes. Now you don't need to run the same type of scans that you do in a traditional environment because you've scanned it before it goes into the container ecosystem and you're scanning the canary instances to make sure that any new vulnerabilities get found. And I, th I think this is, this is important to like, look at where, where containers matter, right? Um, in the cloud versus on-prem, uh, discussion, move to cloud, there's always there's this, uh, uh, and, and then mode one versus mode two, or however you want to call it, cloud native versus traditional applications. Um, there's a lot of thinking that, oh, containers are only for modern applications. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it. The one thing that does change, though, is how you may uh, debug and find faults in an application afterwards. And I don't think it's an argument of one is better than the other. They're both valuable. It's, it depends on the workload and what you're yes. trying to achieve. That's the three definition that he said. They are more classic on how you basically look at it. There are two aspects that are very important on that sense. One is how you're going to operate them. It has to do on the containers that are more IoT on the edge. In, in Cisco, we are working a lot of them. They are immutable. They are a function. You don't change that function. You may patch that function, 
they run on a container because it's more convenient in an environment you're in. And there is this whole piece that has to do with the type of workloads when you're stateless for a process container is more interesting on a scaling out kind of an application. It's not going to apply for the database. So when you look at that, although you classify and makes it easier for people to consume the concept as opposed to go in a buzzword that containers applies to everything, <laughs> you just go and start to say, okay, how my operations swallow that concept? How my actually application development use the one that makes more sense? I agree with Everything said, I think it's it's a continuum. A lot of the controversy you have right now in the container space with you know people making remarks is around where you draw the lines between. And there are people who are interested in like pushing ahead with the cloud native space and say, oh, okay, we don't care about anything. And there are other people who are interested in like, well, um, we have an existing environment and we want to make the advantage of aggregate packaging and this operation about the next step of IT, application centric IT a year or so, the controversy will be over and it will be a continuum. You know, people will have the choice um, to take their, their applications and, and put them into, into containers um, you know, without making a hard choice, oh, I have to use this technology. It's, it's going to be a conversion. I mean, we have seen that today. In the end of the day, although the continuum, I kind of agree, it boils down to whether I can be agile enough for my operations of my business, it's security and I have a good cost. So in the end of the day, what we are seeing, and I'm assuming like IBM is also on the same boat because you look at services and infrastructure and software, they're gonna run these both environments for a long time because they have business that are running on what is there and they're trying to optimize this and consume and new applications more for the mobile and digital world is gonna be written in this new environment because it just makes sense. And in the end of the day, from an operation standpoint, from a business decision, they're going to run from a given time. The continuum will happen, the conversion will happen, but it varies by the business. There are some businesses that are more under pressure for their competitors to move faster. There are others that are not. So they adapt based on cost and need. But fundamentally, the, at a high level, the conceptual reason why you want to move to containers is the promise of standardization, dependency, packaging, and distribution. You want to get reduced costs, overhead, speed. You're trying to achieve all of these by going to containers. Portability is yeah. another one that people are trying to strive for. There's a lot of different aspects, but you may not achieve all of them based on the technology choice that you, you use. It really depends on, ultimately, what are you trying to achieve for the classification of workloads that you have that you're moving to the cloud? If you're building new microservices, cloud native applications, what are you going to use? Probably single process containers, leveraging Docker, Docker images, pick your orchestration technology, probably based on the cloud provider you choose because yes. some cloud providers support both, some choose one. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this, this is where a lot of the discussion is. This is where a lot of the frustration is, how those orchestration layers are gonna change. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's gonna affect how you build your applications, right? It's gonna affect your programming language. Because those orchestration layers are growing to the point that they deal with your service registration, service definition, service lifecycle, service routing. So they're going to play a role into your programming model, which means stickiness. So in a confusing world, I would say, look, containers generally are about speed and efficiency. Right? The container is generally accepted to be a very fast, light, efficient way to work. It's a journey.